What's up, y'all? It's Timmy, and today I'm in Reno, Nevada, getting ready for Burning Man, and I'm excited, so let's get to it. Welcome to Truck House Life, baby. Good morning, everybody. I am in the Cabela's parking lot. Spent the night here. The fires are absolutely horrible. I don't know, my nose is completely clogged and I have a headache. <sighs> anyway, I'm gonna do a lot of shopping today. Just get ready for Burning Man going out there. Uh, Burning Man is not happening, but uh, it kind of is. It's kind of a renegade Burning Man, so I can't wait. It's gonna be an awesome time, but I have to prepare because when you get out there, you have to be completely self-reliant. There's there's no food, there's no water, nothing you can buy out there. You can't even pee on the ground out there. It's an old, ancient, dried-up lake bed, and you're not allowed to pee or poop on the ground or anything like that. So you have to be totally self-contained, which I am in here. But uh, I'm going to go prepare a little further today, so let's get to it. I just left Reno, Nevada, and I'm heading east on Highway 80, and uh, I'm going to Burning Man. So... I figured I'd take you guys with me this round and uh, just show you what it's all about. Man, this is gonna be a really special year because Burning Man's not actually happening. This is like a renegade burn. These are people just showing up in the desert. All the artists, all the people that truly contribute, they're showing up this year. So I think it's gonna be an awesome time. Burning Man's about a two to three hour drive outside of Reno, Nevada. So it's not too far from where I'm at now. But that's a pretty drive out here, so I've got about 60 miles until the town of Gerlach, and then uh, the Black Rock Desert is just past the town of Gerlach. I'll enter into the Burning Man Playa area at uh, the 12 mile marker. I guess that's where it's safe to drive because it's an old lake bed with, uh, sometimes it can be like really wet under the really dry looking surface and you can sink in this super crazy lake mud. And uh, yeah, we don't wanna do that. just occurred to me that probably most of you guys don't know what Burning Man is or what the idea of Burning Man is. Everyone uh, just kind of comes out at their own will and camps out in the desert together um, and nothing is planned. So the whole idea of the Burning Man Festival, uh, keep in mind this isn't Burning Man, but the idea of Burning Man is just radical self-inclusion. So you just be whoever you want. Uh, come out to the desert and you just come out there and uh, there's basically 10 principles. I can't think of all of them right now, but uh, they just involve just being awesome to your neighbors and being friends and gifting each other things and just being being yourself and uh, also being completely self-reliant off-grid and uh, just being able to handle your own stuff basically. And of course you can help people out. That's what it's all about. But uh, when you come out here, you should be prepared to survive completely off grid by yourself for the length of time that you're staying out here. There's a festival called Descend on Ben, which is happening next week. And I'm going to catch that festival for sure. So I'm gonna to have to leave uh, this not Burning Man festival about halfway through it. So I'll probably leave on a Tuesday or something. But uh, I'll definitely catch the first good weekend there and try to capture uh, just what it's all about and show you guys, so yeah. There's basically two small towns out this road towards Burning Man. There's the town of Empire, which I'm rolling into right now. And uh, Gerlach is the last town. It's just a little bit past Empire here. And that's the last chance to get anything, any kind of gas, whatever you need. That's, I mean, that's it. Really, you should get it before then, but. That's the last chance. Oh, check this out. This is the Burning Man RV lot. So people leave their RVs here all year just for Burning Man. A lot of those RVs, I mean, some people use them other times, but most people stash it just for the desert. Here we are, y'all, the town of Gerlach, last stop. I just ran into another uh, Alaskan working back there at the gas station. Um, can't remember his name, but uh, he knows uh, Boot and other Alaskan friends that I know. So. 
Anyhow, we're gonna go through the town of Gerlach here, and uh, once we get through it, we're gonna go up to the 12 mile entrance onto the playa, which is basically the old dried up lake bed. We made it, we're on the playa, check it out. <laughs> Very cool. So the main highway is like right back this way. Yeah, so welcome to uh, Black Rock City. Pretty sweet, huh? So we're gonna go, uh, truck's driving itself. Uh, pretty much a mile or two out here, I believe, and then we'll get to uh, where the stuff's going down. I think. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's so cool to be out here when pretty much no one is out here. Either that or I'm just not to it yet. It's probably all up here. But there's one guy camping way out here. I think I still got a ways to go though. Like looking at a, looking at Google Maps, like we are that little blue dot right there. And we're heading towards the city, which is all up in there. So we'll see. I feel like I should see it by now, but. I know most people are coming out like next week, pretty much. They're, they're gonna not come for the entire Burning Man. It's gonna come for like Labor Day weekend. At least that's what I've seen the majority of the posts saying for folks that are rolling out. But I'm gonna come enjoy as long as I can. If nothing else, it'd be nice just camping, chilling. Absolutely gorgeous sunset. Well guys, we're here. Or you get greeted by the neighbors a second ago. Um, so the first thing I like to do when I get down here is this playa is super alkaline super nasty and gets in everything so you just want to do the best you can right off the bat to tape it out so what i like to do is get a just painter's tape and definitely tape up your air filter so i put a bag over my air filter and i'm going to tape that off it's part of the setup ritual for burning man right here guys if you don't tape all of your vents inside your car it's i mean you're gonna already you're already gonna get a whole bunch of playa dust inside your car but it makes a big difference just doing like little things like taking the time to tape stuff up. Yeah, it just saves you a lot of cleaning later. All right. Starting to get dark out. Starting to get camp set up. Get some solar lights. They'll hold a charge tomorrow, but they'll help kind of light up camp a little bit so they don't get run over. I've got other lights I'm going to put in the front of the truck. And I've got the porch lights in the back, so that'll light it up pretty well. A little fire pit going out here. Half my camper lights are working, solar lights are working. Got a little fire going. Pretty chill. Here we are, day one of burning, man. It's a beautiful morning. A little bit smoky out. Cool enough where I haven't had to use the AC yet, but I'll probably use it today. Let's check out camp. Nice temperature this morning. It's like a nice morning to have a cup and chill out on the porch. Really good, super strong Colombian coffee. Then I use my little Vietnamese coffee dripper here. As I showed you guys, I took, I removed my sheepskin seat covers and just threw some sheets down. It's not dusty right now, but as soon as if a dust storm comes through, it just gets in everything. So you have to have like your doors and windows really well sealed. And like I was saying, oh. Anyhow, my plan is to stay out here until probably Tuesday or Wednesday this next week. So I've got maybe five or six days in the playa. And I imagine this weekend I'll start ramping up a pretty good bit. And uh, yeah, we'll just show you guys kind of what it's about. I'll try my best to capture it and uh, not be obnoxious with the camera at the same time. Had a nice fire out here last night. Had maybe six or seven people walk over. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. And one, one really big thing about Burning Man and being on the playa is you cannot put a droplet of water onto the surface, onto the ground anywhere. You can't pee on it. You can't dump any gray water. I have my hand pump faucet and a gallon jug so I can pump myself water. But for my gray water, I have to put everything into the toilet. That's my gray water. So in other words, I'm gonna dump my coffee grounds 
into the toilet. A couple of you are thinking it's probably gross, but you know what? It's, this is life. Try to be really conservative because I only have a little toilet to hold all my gray water. There we go. It's clean. Clean toilet. Cheers. Here's camp. Get the little Honda 1000 generator running. All my solar lights are all charging up. Solar panel is directly facing the sun of the camper, so it's charging everything. We got our fire pit out here. The porch is in the shade, so that's been nice. It's pretty warm right now, too. It is, uh, let's see. Wow. 95 degrees almost. Pretty crazy, but guess what? We have air conditioner going, ice cold AC going, and a nice comfortable shaded space to hang out in. Pretty nice. It feels great in here. And so right now my 100 watt solar panel is pulling in 87 watts, which is insane. Usually the best you get is like 70% of your solar panel. So super efficient out here. I'm just totally, completely off grid. My fridge freezer. Been set on 28 degrees and it's indefinitely running for free off electricity. I've been on the road for two weeks now and my battery, let's check out the battery. Battery is still at 100%. That's incredible. Just so cool to be off grid and generating your own electricity indefinitely. 62 degrees inside the camper. Let's see what it's doing outside. Almost literally 100 degrees. That's pretty gnarly. So the people are starting to roll in slowly. Well, it is nice and cool in here from the air conditioner going and uh, it's the middle of the day, so I'm trying to stay out of the heat. So I thought uh, it's a great time to just work on some video editing. So I'm gonna do some of that for a while, chill out. Oh yeah, feels so good in here. Life is good at the moment, y'all. I just cranked out another video on the laptop here. I'm just trying to stay in the camper for the heat of the day, let it kind of pass on by. It's all cozy in here. But yeah, cranking out another video, doing some work. Got the AC going. Just had some olives and other delicious cheeses and meats for lunch. And yeah, I'm just, just chilling. It's great. There's uh, a lot more people are starting to roll. It doesn't look like it, but there's been a lot of cars rolling in. So a lot of camps and stuff. All right, guys, it's probably, I don't know, close to six o'clock. I've been editing videos the last like six or seven hours in here. I basically just cranked out two videos, so done with that. I had to use the little Blue Eddy to charge the laptop because it uses a lot of juice when I edit. So I'm gonna go charge this with the solar panel right now while I still have some sun out the door. So let's do that. degrees still pretty toasty let's uh use the power of the sun and get the ball rolling here let's see i believe it's this one. Oh yeah Here's the solar panel setup. So this is Blue Eddy's 200 watt solar panel. It's obviously pretty late in the day. The sun's gonna be down in about an hour and a half. So I'm probably not gonna get a lot of juice out of this. Let's see what it's getting out of it. Getting, uh, yeah, just 13 watts, but that's better than nothing. I should have put it out earlier, but I've been using it all day. So yeah, I'll just start letting it charge and that's about it. Anyhow, I think it's about dinner 30, so let's cook some food. This camera. Yeah, here's my, uh, I never showed you guys the camera I use for YouTube, but it's a really nice one, but there's no built-in stabilization, so you have to use a gimbal and it's a freaking pain. I hate gimbals, so anyhow. Got a lot of stuff for dinner in here. It's the only downside to a cooler style fridge, like a top loader. Everything's just kind of buried. Woo, goodness. 
Mongolian beef. Sounds all right. All right, dug ourselves out a frying pan. Get the pan fired up. And let's do some cooking. Timmy's cooking show. Today we're making Mongolian beef, otherwise known as uh, I'm not making anything, I'm cooking it frozen. So that's what we do. So if you've never been to Burning Man, the last thing you want to do here is cook. Even chefs, like people that are professional, excellent chefs for a living, they pre-cook their food before Burning Man. And for a good reason, it's just like hot. Like right now I'm heating my camper up with this heat to make this hot meal. But you can imagine if you're really trying to prep and cook all these different sauces and heat all this different stuff up, your camper will just be on fire. You have a bunch of messy dishes to work with. Get pre-packaged food or make your own food ahead of time and have it packaged up and just ready to cook. I promise you it's the way to go if you haven't been here before. Oh man, that looks so good. Fork. It's the longest I've ever ran a generator in like you know, six years of full time in. I just never use an AC, but you have to run a generator to run air conditioning, as it turns out. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's still half frozen, but it's really, it's really good. So I'm gonna chill a little bit longer until the sun's pretty much down. Maybe we'll go for a quick sunset drone flight. And uh, then we'll go check a couple different campsites and I just go wander around. Well, that's a wrap, y'all. Stay tuned for part two of this video where I take you all around Burning Man and show you what's happening. And if you did like this video, make sure to smash that like button down there and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for the next one. And we'll see you next time. Peace, y'all.